and welcome to the Art Center and the Holland Community Open Exhibition. All of this is happening in Corvallis. Um, my name is Hester Kuka. I'm the curator of the Art Center, and I'm so pleased to present you this open community show. The Holland Open is an exhibit about the joy of art making, about those moments that we get outside of ourselves when we're making art, when we are creating. It goes for all of us. And for the 215 people that participated in this show specifically, art is also about sharing. And here we share one artwork. You could, if you were living in Lynn or Benton County, we do this every year, so we invite you now for next year. Our youngest participant is five, and our oldest participant is 92. This exhibit is organized by different categories, and we have abstract, folks, fantasy, functional, flora, fauna, and landscapes, seascapes, insidescapes such as still life. And here we start first with talking about the folks category, about people. It is very much about friendships, about connection, uh, about being together. We have Chin Lei, who is painting on silk, a scene from his homeland, Vietnam. It is called to the flower market in Tet. Indira Gardner, just next to him, shows her three friends dancing. And it's such a joyful picture, so full of life. And of course, next to that is Mike and Joan, um, who the people who brought in work should recognize because they always volunteer. It is made by their friend Mary McDermott. Above the three friends of Indira Gardner, we see um, Mike Spikes, the sailor. This also happens to be an award winner. And it won this award because the happiness, the relaxed, relaxedness is so coming through in this picture, in the beautiful colors that soothe your soul. And then we go to a Laura Zars piano lesson, where a grandmother is teaching her grandson, I think, uh, how to play the piano. A better connection is not possible. After that, we see a lovely portrait by Bill Shumway of Emma. It's so still, it's so wonderful. You can really connect with this person. And then to end this category with another award winner, Meredith Whitman, Kid with Cat is my note, but the real title is Daisy Chain. And it is this, it is a girl holding her cat that she gave a daisy chain with such tenderness. And these feelings come out in all of those paintings, also the ones that I didn't mention. Category where people say, oh, my kid could do that too. Well, this wall shows you that may not be the case. Abstract can range from very bold with broad strokes to very delicate and intricate, as we see by Jen Konzak. It is so intimate and so tenderly painted, uh, painted and drawn. There are different techniques used in that. 
And Leslie Dejana is the award winner. I definitely want to point out the work by Emmett Ritter. It's a tiny little piece called Affirmations. It has that same intimacy and tenderness that I talked about in Jan Contact's work. And what Emmett added was this, this wire holder. It's all made, I think, of materials that he found. You deserve tenderness. And so abstract maybe give you the feel of big and bold and scratchy and just doing something. Tenderness can be part of it as well. Here we are in the world of fantasy, another category that, that lends its importance because it can do so much with storytelling. And storytelling is a big, big thing in artwork. Um, we have a, a very talented young man called Lyle Gifford. He's 14 years old and made this wonderful map in the shape of a rhinoceros, which is a tradition that goes back to the 17th century. Holland, not Howland, Holland has so many maps in the shape of a lion. I like the rhinoceros. Uh, he not only won the fantasy award, but also his age group award. Another piece I want to point out is by Lester Truffaut, and it's called Once in a Blue Moon, and it's about techniques. I'm pointing the work by Lester Truffaut out because I was intrigued how he got to this result. He built up his work in layers by blocking off, by spray painting, by painting with a brush, by making details, by having non-representational parts, but also a guy on a horse, very detailed, and it makes you put yourself into this dreamy fantasy world. Very good for this category. What about this category, scapes? What is that? Scapes isn't even a word. <laughs> well, it is to pull together landscapes, cityscapes, seascapes, skyscapes, galaxyscapes, and even indoorscapes such as um, still lives. In short, scapes. This is work by Jeff Gunn that is dear to my heart because it is about the Amsterdamse Grachten. Um, I'm just saying that to tease you. It is called Canal Adventures, and it is about my birth town. So I'm very pleased to welcome this um, work in the last Howland Open community show that I will work in. Um, other works are based on another Dutch origin, Vincent van Gogh, or Van Gogh, as some of you would say. Here is Rip Kronk, who made an impression on Starry Night. And I'm not usually a, a fan of quoting artwork, but I think this is really very well done. It really became Rip Kronk and not a fake Van Gogh. Good job.
show, we need to have a category where all the local potters can bring in their bowls and mugs and other things. So we have a category that is called functional. I'm not going to go into the discussion here between art and craft. Functional, what is it? Here we have three pieces together that we could fight the fact of how functional it is. Here's a necklace, and I was just thrilled that the artist Pamela Pniak Thompson called it functional. Because what could be less functional than jewelry? Well, we jewelry wearers know how functional and needed jewelry is. The other two are in a category of basketry, and that is just coincidental. Here we have Sally Ishikawa with a Sally bag, not because she is Sally Ishikawa, but because of the Wasco uh, tribe that made these baskets and called them Sally bags. Um, it's just beautifully executed. Uh, it um, made her win the award well, Pamela got an honorable mention. The other one that I would like to show you is by Deb Curtis, a basket that is double walled. It's really beautifully done. And in its simplicity, perfect. The subject of the flora category speaks for itself flowers, trees, plants, all kinds of things. What we see in this category is the most um, fiber pieces. Is that a coincidence? Or is that really so connected to the flora subject? There's quite some botanical printing. Two are on uh, fabric, and one of them uh, is on paper. Um, here we see the fabric and here the one on paper. The piece uh, in the middle on top is quite unique with all its wooliness looking as a moss landscape. Then the one below, who happens to be the award winner um, by Gail Pelican, is called Holiday Chair. And in reality, a design for um, gift wrap paper for the holidays. But what I wanted to point out specifically is the work by Crumkey. It is called Visions. And when he brought it in, I said, oh, that is great for abstract. And he mumbled, yeah, yeah, maybe. And then it showed up in Flora. When I look at it, it's just so different and so um, inventive of what he's done with found materials that I really enjoy this work. And I can see that it is something growing. So Flora indeed. When we have a flora category, of course, we have to have a fauna category as well. And we do. And most of the awards we have given came into that category. Last year, it was Gail Everett who won the People's Choice Award. And the award is getting on the postcard. Here she is with her well, buffalo head. So this year, she went smaller and made it into this totally adorable little sheep. Ba ba. <laughs> I wanted to point out 
a work where the artist really hesitated in, what, in which category she should put this. It is this work, and it is called About Moss and Crows, and the crows won out. But we can agree that moss is a very important subject matter in the picture as well. It is um, by Marilyn Singh. It won uh, the Fauna Award. Ludmila Schuster received an honorable mention for her fish or fishing question mark. Uh, it is a clay plaque and the detailing is so intricate and delicate, it's quite wonderful. Next to it, I would like to point out a quilt by Karen Miller that combines several techniques. It um, is reproductions of a journal she found about um, butterflies. And then she printed the journal, she printed the butterflies, and then quilted it. Something new this year, the wild card. The exhibition committee would love to pick something just themselves of something unexpected that will change every year, the wild card award. This year we looked for work that conveyed joy. When we looked around, we saw Diane Whittler Wenzel's work. It's a self-portrait and it could not be more joyful. The exuberation jumps off the canvas, so to speak. The Curator's Award. What is the Curator's Award for? Is it for the best work? Well, that would be a stretch in 215 pieces. The most avant-garde, the most innovative. Um, does it have to be a work by a professional artist? I thought about what the Curator's Award really should represent. And I mentioned that the Howland is about the joy of art making. And here we see um, a work about the galaxy, which it's called Galaxy by Juniper Ward. And Juniper is 11 years old. So she's definitely not the adult professional artist. But what I see in this is wanting to represent something that she is passionate about, uh, the galaxy. What I see in this is the joy of art making, needing more space, not having enough to make um, the, the uh, galaxy here with Earth that is really from this cutout but the whole thing. And although it is held together by tape, and it's probably not going to hold up uh, for a long time, it's not archival, I do think it represents that joy, that creative moment. And that is why I want to acknowledge this artwork. It doesn't have to be in a beautiful frame. It doesn't have to be made with expensive art materials as long as that creative impulse comes through. And it certainly is. Uh, in the spirit of the Howland, the Howland Open Community Show, um, it wouldn't be complete without an opportunity for the community to tell us what they like best. And this year's winner is Earl Newman. Who doesn't know Earl Newman? He has been making posters for 70 
plus years. He's 92 now, and I'm so excited to be able to announce his People's Choice Award because it's not only beautiful, but also has a wonderful message. Be kind. for attending this curator's tour of the Holland Community Open Exhibition. I really encourage you to come in person and see all the work that I didn't mention that also should have been mentioned. To look at all the things that didn't get an award but could have got an award. The last day is March 31st. Thank you for all the artists that have participated and you can pick up your work on April 1st, no kidding.